can we think collaborative and can we get out of our heads a bit and leave our egos at home and can we learn from one another. To be honest with you, we're not in a great position. Um, it's not unique to South Africa, but of course this is the context that we know so well. Um, this year has really ramped up food insecurity in a very big way, um, but it existed you know, pre-COVID-19. Inequality plays a, a huge part in that, but it's also the nature of our food system. Our long uh, food supply chain lines, um, the inaccessibility of a lot of people, the monopolization of food in many ways and um, that leaves people reliant on quite a small um, dominant system. Between March and I think the present day around 3 million people have lost their jobs in this country. That's immediate buying power that's lost. So people who were buying, you know, whether from supermarkets or spas or shops or, or local farmers, they were not able to do that um, and became really reliant on uh, food aid measures. Um, what we've also seen is through closing our borders, uh, some of the kind of cheaper foodstuffs that we bring in from overseas have not been making their way to South Africa as frequently. Um, the price of food has just gone up substantially. I think at last count it was between, on average, between, between 20 and 30 percent this year. So if you think about that impact on people's household budgets, and if you then think about the kind of uh, salaries that the majority of people in South Africa are living off, it, it's just not possible. You know, uh, you, you just cannot buy food with that little money. So there are various kind of working definitions of what the food commons are. If you break it down into its components, something that is common is for everyone. So the food commons at its core, at its essence, is really food is available for everyone at any time, no matter what your kind of socioeconomic uh, or political standing is. In the context of the, the current food system that we find ourselves in, I would argue that we don't really have a food commons as yet or, or nothing that really exists in a kind of uh, scaled or, or really tangible way. What we've realized during the pandemic that food security was a huge issue. So even though we are not experts in this field, we realized that we had to respond and the community really gathered and there was a network that formed that um, provided different solutions to food security. So the Makers Valley Partnership really is the sum of all the organizations that contribute to the Makers Valley. We are just the backbone organization that connects all the dots. We are this network and really nothing would be possible without all the various players and change makers in the community. I think as the Makers Valley Partnership, we really want to focus on our community. I think different communities respond in different ways and our local context um, kind of directs us in the way that we think would be a sustainable solution for our community specifically. And I think why we do that is because we know that our community has a specific mindset um, around food security and waste and specific challenges that they face. The first thought was obviously around getting immediate food relief to community members, so the typical soup kitchen. And then in parallel um, we started to organize um, food parcels. A really interesting idea because we, as you might have heard already in Makers Valley, we are a lot about the local economy and the well-being. So for us the question was like if we're going the route of food parcels, is there an alternative instead of going food vouchers to big chains? Can we keep the local economy growing? So we reached out to Spaza shop owners and um, we started to engage with them. And then we had food parcels amongst others that actually involved the local Spaza shops. So that was added to the mix. <laughs> and yeah, and then many, many other things were added uh, along the way to the mix into what we call our network of possibilities. It just confirmed collaborations. That's the only way to go in these projects. You can't say you're doing something in the community and you, it's you alone and your thoughts and your ideas that you're putting out there. And this community, for many, many years, people have been in the trenches doing community work. So uh, it was beautiful to be able to link up with those people. 
There are huge flaws in our food system from farm to table that impact food security. Sometimes there is not enough food, but I think the bigger problem is access to food and how do people access nutritious and healthy food because that is one of the biggest things that we see is there's this concept of hidden hunger. People might on the surface level seem as though they've been fed but are they actually being fed if they haven't got nutritional value from that? The business of large-scale farmers and bring it to the masses on a smaller scale because there's um, the masses get involved and produce better crops. Everything is all around better, as he's saying that it has to be socially, economically, as well as um, environmentally beneficial. And uh, also for us right now and for the generations to come. That's most, most, that's a crucial thing. You don't want when you are vulnerable and hungry to lose your dignity in, as well because you're hungry, right? For some food, uh, for some food parcel. I thought, let's take it above it, the, the, the individual family's gardens to now communal, uh, communal gardens. And wow, I was the first spot. I knew exactly where we were gonna launch. I knew exactly what we were going to do. And then from there, what I did was, I basically contacted Enrique, told him the vision, told him what I thought, and really, his support, his partnership has been amazing, strategic, and I've fallen in love with the work that they do here at Wawa. It means so much to so many. Positive change, because it's not easy. We have drugs, alcohol, and substance abuse that's killing our community as we speak. Some gender-based violence, I don't want to talk about HIV and AIDS. Jobs. Everyone is asking me, what can I do? I'm asked, how can I, I want a job, I want to be a volunteer. So I said, come. The boys that are working here, the girls that are working here, I just told them to come. So we source the food waste wherever we find it, be it from a retailer, be it from a farmer, um, be it from a, a restaurant that closes down, for example, which has been very topical in these last six months. Um, we then bring it all into a central place um, and we redistribute that. We clean it, we check it up, we make sure it's safe and we redistribute that to a whole network of shelters, soup kitchens, feeding schemes. Um, so in the last six months specifically, um, we've, we've really, we've upped our game. I mean, we've had to, obviously, you know, hunger and scarcity has been really, really on the rise. I have never experienced food scarcity. But on an intellectual level for me to know that even before lockdown, 13 million South Africans were going hungry by the lowest UN standard. What we are hoping to see and what our end goal and vision is, is for a wasteless society because we think food waste is one of the big issues when it comes to food security. How can we stop waste? How can we see waste as something valuable? How can we be trading as a community, bartering? You might have excess in one aspect, uh, you know, in surplus in terms of maize, but another household might have too many vegetables that are about to expire. But how do we create a mechanism or a currency or a system that allows people to benefit from one another? And that really goes into the heart and core of a well-being economy. But as South Africans, we know this as Ubuntu. It's something that we have inherently as Africans, that we want to share and that we want to contribute to each other. But I think we've lost that. And we, we look to supermarkets and we look to people to come and save us. But we can actually help each other. So that is the long-term vision. And I think that is the way we can make it sustainable, a way of living is something that we want to contribute to. It's a question of who is doing the day-to-day. -day. Gardens are a lot of work. You can see uh, again in the background behind me, you know, people wheeling wheelbarrows and digging in the soil and weeding and it's, it's actually a full-time job. So if you're working with a group of people who have committed to this process, who are championing uh, this garden in their communities, um, then you, you have a chance. Can we understand that we can't tackle any of these social ills that we sit with globally on our own? And can we look into our communities, not so much outside, to say, hey, who's doing what? And you're on the ground, there's a lot I can learn from you. So.